Welcome to the Create What You Speak podcast. Join me as we have a real life discussion on how to change your life by changing your thoughts. Remember, question everything, trust yourself, and find your truth. Hi, and welcome to the Create What You Speak podcast. My name is Sloan Fremont, and I'm your host. This week, we're going to be talking about becoming fearless in your reality. Um, I had a specific event happen this week that I wanted to tell you about, and it really has to do with this feeling of being fearless, right? Being fearless in our reality and the way we live our lives. So, I mean, we know the basis of the show, we talk about this all the time, is we create our reality with the thoughts that we think, right? That That is something that, um, honestly, I've struggled with throughout 2020 to really be able to wrap my head around that with everything that's happened. Um, maybe you feel the same with the way things have been. Um, I also have struggled with that and questioned myself many times wondering, am I actually walking the talk that I teach on this show, right? I've, I've wavered in and out of that throughout this year and we're coming down obviously to the end of 2020. And, you know, I was thinking back to what my intention was at the beginning of 2020, which was to show up and fully be myself. And I mean, who would have known, right? January of 2020 and and where we are today, um, that things would be as they are. But I was really thinking about that because, um, you know, I I think for the most of the year I did, but then I think, you know, obviously there were times when I didn't. And this whole, this thought that I had this week about becoming fearless in our reality, it it really, I don't know, it, it, it it got me looking back over this year. It, It made me, you know, question a lot of things that I did, a lot of things that I've thought, um, and, and what it really comes down to, I think, is, is you know, our fear comes from a feeling like we have lost control on what's it, it, with what's going on around us, right? I mean, there's nothing worse than feeling like you're spiraling out of control and that you just have it, no control over it. And that's, to me, that's what this year has felt like, right? The spiraling, like, when is this going to stop, right? Why does this keep happening? You know, what, what the fuck is going on, right? Just the, the constant looping and spiraling. And when our reality is such that let's take 2019, for example, right? We, we had the, the normal things that I'm going to put in quotes, air quotes, the normal things that we would be, you know, concerned about. But, you know, for the most part, I think this year, you know, we had those normal things and then we had all these other layers of things on top of that, right? Like piled on top of that. And this, this, this feeling of like feeling out of control was, it was so easy this year, right? It was just almost like it just, even if you were someone who felt like you pretty much had it together and you, you know, you, you felt like you were somewhat, um, able to manage the way you felt or the way you thought about things this year really tested that for all of us. And I think in this, this feeling of, of fear coming from feeling like we've lost control when that happens, it's really easy for us just to instantly go into this victim mode and feel like we have no choice, but just to respond what to what's going on, right? Just, it's, it's not even a, a, a thought about it. It's more of just like, ricocheting responses, right? Like these responses are just coming as fast as the, the activity, whatever that is, is coming, um, at us. And what I've been able to look back at this year and really get a better understanding of is this, this feeling like this, this, that we're a victim and that we have no control is, is really this old way of thinking, right? I talk about this a lot and you probably heard this phrase about the great awakening and in 2020 being the great awakening. And I personally believe that that's my belief. Um, I'm not saying it has to be yours, but it's mine. And this, what I, one element that, of this, that I think this, that we have, that we're being shown is this moving out of this 
victim mode, moving out of this lost feeling of this loss of control and taking that power back, right? Taking that power back within ourselves to m- move into almost uncharted territories of, of ways of living, right? Like it's so easy to fall back into that. It's so easy to see everybody else falling into that, um, you know, this victim and this ricochet response type of living that we're really moving into this different space in, in 2021 and beyond. And I, I, I just think this, this old way of thinking of this victim and feeling like that we have no control is just this, it's like, I don't know, this old mainstream way of thinking. And we have other ways, we, we can choose other ways to think. And as we move through this, through this great awakening, through this, this new way of living, this, this new perspective, we get to come out of the other side of this thinking of things in a new way, right? We get to have, we get to have this new perspective. We've all lived through this. Um, and so that's something I want you to think about as you listen to this episode today is just coming out of this 2020 coming out of, you know, and going into 2020 with a new perspective of how you get to look at your life. And so really stepping outside of the noise, right? Putting all that aside and really starting knowing what you know now, right? Knowing how we've seen this year ago, really starting to believe and accept and and ponder it, right? Like think about it if you have to, or rage against it or whatever, wherever you're at with it. Right. But really coming to terms and understanding that we create our reality and then deciding as your, as a result of your acknowledgement of that, that you get to take control of it, right? You get to take control of it. And I know, but Sloan, this is going on now, right? This is happening. That is happening, right? I know it's crazy. I know it is insane. But in the midst of all that, in the midst of all that, you still get to decide that you create your reality and you still get to decide that you take control of it. And so I want to share an example of something that happened to me this week along the lines of this. And um, just going back to this this theme this week of becoming fearless in your reality, Um As many of you know, if you've listened to the show or if you're new, you'll know now that um, I don't wear a mask. I I personally don't believe in it. I think it's a bunch of bullshit. I think it is a scam of epic proportions. Um, I don't think it works. I think there's so much proof that it doesn't work. I also don't believe that somebody should be able to tell me what I should do with my body, right? If I want to be, I haven't worn one and I'm still living. So if I want to, quote, run that risk, which to me it's zero risk, but that that's my opinion, um, especially for a virus with a 99% survival rate. But anyway, those are my beliefs on that. And so I don't wear one. So for quite a while, it, it's been such a source of anxiety for me. It's been, you know, I've been through all the emotions about it, the rage, the frustration, the the hate, the the confusion, you know, all of this. And you know, I got to this point with it where I just really, I I told my dad, I'm like, I just have chosen not to participate in society for a while until this madness ends. And that lasted for a while, but now I'm coming around to the point where I'm like, you know, I'm tired of, of that. I'm tired. I'm tired of having my rights, um, violated. I'm tired of being the one to, just acquiesce in this because I don't want to deal with it. And I'm not doing it anymore. I'm sick of this. This is bullshit and I'm sick of it. And my my thoughts on this don't have to be your thoughts, right? I'm not trying to convince anybody. Look, that is absolutely not what I'm trying to do. All I'm, I'm, I'm telling you my opinion so you can understand where I'm coming from with what I dealt with this week. So uh, the I refinanced my house. Um, I got like a 2% drop in rate and like cut off, you know, seven years, whatever, went to a 20 year. And the closing was this week. And I almost didn't do this. This started, you know, back, I don't know, end of November, whenever we started the paperwork. And, um, I almost didn't do this because I didn't want to have to deal with the madness of going somewhere and signing paperwork, um, with the mask. And so, which is ridiculous. It's, it's, it's completely fucking ridiculous that that's, but that's where I was at with it. That's where I was. I was like, I can't manage this. I just, this is too fucking stupid. I don't even want to deal with it. And then I was like, you know what? No, I, again, I'm, I'm sick of my self being, you know, 
put aside or like, I, like I don't matter because I don't, you know, I, I won't participate in the scam. And I'm like, no, I'm not doing that anymore. And so the closing was this week and we had to close it. I had to close at the title company and I, I was going to call them ahead of time and ask them about, you know, tell them I, I can't wear a mask for health reasons, for religious reasons. And, and personally, just speak for my own moral and ethical convictions. I mean, you don't have to be a Christian or Jewish or whatever to have a religious obligation to this. I mean, you just don't. And that's what I say. You know, I have a health and religious reasons for why I can't do this. And so the per the person from the title company ended up calling me the day before the closing. Uh, she had some questions about a couple of things. And so I brought this up to her. I said, I, I can't wear a mask or face shield or any of this for health and religious re reasons. So I just want to make sure you can accommodate me and this isn't going to be a problem. And she kind of hem hawed around for a minute. And then she said I could sign the paperwork in my car. So I'm like, all right, you know what? Fine. Fine. I still... If that's what it's going to take right now, then fine. But, you know, as I'm thinking about this and, and I went yesterday to sign the paperwork and I'm sitting there in my car signing this paperwork. And as I'm signing it, after everything I sign, there's a place for a notary to, to add their stamp and sign their signature. And I'm like, and again, another level of bullshit to this because nobody's out here witnessing me sign this paperwork. I mean, these are fucking legal documents and nobody's out here witnessing this. And, you know, and, and then I go through this whole thing with myself on this about participating in the scam, like in my, my ethical convictions about this, like my beliefs about this are so strong. I mean, so strong. And, you know, I, 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 I get, so frustrated even with my own self because I, I can't, it's almost like I can't, um, wrap my head around what, what I'm, what, what this is like, what, how, like every other rule or law has suddenly went out the window. And like I said to the woman on the phone, I, you know, this accommodation, I'm tired of not being accommodated for because I won't participate in the scam. And I feel like I'm, you know, I've been, like relegated to my home on home arrest for some, I haven't even done anything. Right. I'm like, and all these people are out there doing all these other things, right? Like burning buildings down and, and rioting and looting and all this, and they get let go. I mean, it's the, the irony of this is just insane. And so I, you know, I'm to the point with this, like I said, requiring them to accommodate me, especially in this instance, when I was paying so much money at the, for the title company to do this closing. So and I mentioned this last week, a big part of what's helped me get confident with this was the work that Peggy Hall has done from the Healthy American. She has, I've done her webinars, uh, the, the content on her website is, is so valuable to help people, Americans, understand your rights. And I, again, I think that is something this is showing us in 2020 is we need to understand our rights and we need to speak up for ourselves and we need to stand up. So... So this, this, with this closing this week, one of the things that as I was, this was, you know, as I was leading up to signing the paperwork, you know, and I'm having anxiety about this, about having to deal with this mask bullshit and walking in there and what's going to happen. And, you know, several times I was like, well, it would just be easier if I just showed up and did it. You know, if I just followed the crowd, if I just showed up and did it. And then I'm like, no, are you fucking kidding me? Like to myself, I'm saying this, right? Like, no, no. Do you walk your talk in this or are you going to bend over and bow to the bullshit, right? And it's like, and I was, no, I'm not bending over to this. That my, like I said, I believe so strongly in this and I can't, I cannot morally go against myself on this because my beliefs are so strong. That's just, that is just where I'm at with this and it's not going to change. I don't see it. It hasn't changed from day one of this and I don't see it changing day now or <laughs> whatever day we're in now. So I bring this up about this example because maybe you've been through this too, right? Where you have these convictions about this or you, you're, you're struggling with, with what, whatever side of this you're on in your own way, right? Like, again, I'm not trying to tell you to believe what I believe. I'm just telling you what I believe. And a lot of this has caused us, you know, to not fear, to not feel like we are fearless, right? It's, it's, it's the opposite, right? It feels very restrictive. It feels very, um, scary, right? The anxiety. I talk about that a lot, right? All of this. So I, I bring this example up this week 
because this was a big deal for me. It seems so stupid. It seems so stupid that I even have to tell you this, but that's where things are. And that's where I was with this. And I went through this whole thing with myself of, am I, are you going to actually stand up for yourself in this? Are you going to actually become fearless in this? Are you actually going to make somebody accommodate you for once instead of accommodating everybody else and shutting your mouth? Right. And that's, and that's, that's where I'm at with this right now. And that's why I wanted to tell you this because it's very easy to go against our own moral and ethical convictions. It's very easy to do it. It's just, a, it's just only going to be a minute or it's not that big of a deal. And then we continue to do this and it chips away at our soul. It chips away at our self-esteem. It chips away at who we are as people. And I don't agree with that. And I won't have that in my own life. I will not do that. And Maybe you feel the same. And that's why I wanted to tell you this this week, because I wanted you to know you're not alone. If you're going through this back and forth with yourself on this, um, you're not alone. Um, I talk about this every week and I still go through it. But it was so important to me that I stood up for myself. It was so important to me that I stood up for what I believe in, that I wanted to talk to you about that this week, because becoming fearless in your reality is what it is going to take for this to change. It's it's it's. It's one of the keys, I think, to the Great Awakening. It's one of the keys to living in a in a way that is what I think 99% of humans want to live in, is stepping up, saying how you feel, and believing in yourself that you can do that, right? And I, I, you know, I think we fear we fear the future because we we automatically assume it's going to be bad. Right. So this becoming fearless is is uh, it doesn't even seem possible. Right. Because we fear that the future is going to be bad. And we're, we're so certain of that. Right. Like we have our conviction, like we're so certain that the future is going to go this certain way that isn't in our favor, that the thought of becoming fearless in that is almost feels impossible. Right. So we, we either fear, feel that that it's good, the future is going to be bad or whatever the future is going to bring that we're not going to be equipped to to cope with it or to handle it or maybe we assume that we're not going to even have the resources to deal with whatever the future brings and, and none of that is true right none of that is true these are all these separation lies that we've grown up with these are all those the mainstream underlying um messages that we've heard throughout our lives and none of that is true when we accept, we create our reality and, and we take our power back, right? We take our, and sometimes taking our power back means taking our power back from ourselves. Like I did this week, like I was trying to talk myself out of my own beliefs and I was like, no, wait a minute. No, that's not true. When we accept, we create our reality. We take our power back. Nothing can stop us, right? This is how we become fearless in our reality. There's a video I want to share with you. I'm going to link to it in the show notes. It's, it's by a man named Brad Johnson, and he has a channel called New Earth Teaching. And he did a video called One Thought Away from Freedom. And he used this example with a ball. And he, he used the example of like when, you, when we're giving our power away, like throwing the ball and that other person is catching our power, right? But we have the, the ability to take that ball back, right? To take that power back and center that within ourselves and become fearless in our reality, we have to take responsibility for how we're thinking. And does that mean we're going to be positive 100% of the time? No, it does not. And there's not even an expectation of that. We have our emotions on purpose and they're there for a reason. And, and we're, we're not meant to be in that, you know, state of perfection, perfection with quotes, but in that happiness or that, that, that best feeling place 24-7. No, we're not meant for that but we're also not meant to live in fear 24 seven either, right? We're not meant to live in fear or anxiety or, or guilt or shame or, or feeling, you know, disempowered, right? We're not meant to live in that state either. We have to start being purposeful with our thoughts and that includes myself, right? <laughs> I, I always tell you guys, I, I'm talking about this cause I'm giving my own self the advice too, but we have to start to be purposeful with our thoughts. And, and this means we have to be aware of what we're focusing on. We have to be aware of what we're consuming. And we have to be aware of when we fall in those traps that get us down the wrong path, right? And that's really easy to do right now. But it takes that personal power. It takes that willingness. It takes wanting to be able to do that for yourself because you understand that on the other side of that, when you get through all that shit, when you get through the ego, when you get through the, the stories, when you get through the bullshit we want to tell ourselves, on the other side is a better way of living. On the other side is where we become fearless in our reality. And to do that, we need to increase our, our, our level of self-awareness. We need to really step up the self-monitoring, right? We need to really 
step that up and and understand that that is key and extremely important in this. And when we accept our reality, when we accept that we create our reality and we take our power back, nothing can stop us. That is how we become fearless in our reality. All right, so that's it this week on our topic of becoming fearless in your reality. I, I really hope this helped this week. Um, my intention every week is to provide content that empowers you, right? That lifts you up, that that gives you a different perspective. And um, as I always say, my thoughts or my beliefs aren't the only way, right? This is just one um, one piece of information that you consume, and you can take what you want from it and leave the rest. So um, that's it. For this week, uh, I wanted to tell you real quick, I forgot to mention this this week, or last week, I mean, I, I'm starting something new uh, where I'm doing some quick, short videos during the week. I'm calling them reality management, and it's really a way to help you manage your reality. So I wanted to do that outside of the podcast because there's a lot of times during the week that I have a lot of things that I want to say, and I didn't really have an outlet for that before, and um, often by the time it got to the time I was recording the show for the next week, I would forget what I wanted to say. So I've created this uh, these new videos. They're on BitChute. My BitChute link is is in the show notes. So please click, please subscribe to my BitChute channel. Um, like I said, I'll be doing short, quick videos during the week with the intention to help you navigate your reality. And um, let's see, before I close out, just a reminder, my social media accounts. So I'm going to link to all this in the show notes, but please follow me on Parlor Mayway, Gab, as I mentioned, BitChute. I also have a Telegram channel. Uh, my Telegram channel has the free personal awakening map pinned to the top of it. So please join the channel and get that. Um, also, my course, 33 Days of Magic, is available. So that's really meant to help you take what you learn in the show one step further and apply it in your own life. So if you have any other questions, need anything else, my website is sloanfremont.com. All right, that is it. Remember, question everything, trust yourself, and find your truth. 